Welcome to Calculating U-Values with SOLIDWORKS Simulation. On screen you'll see a very simple model of a window. We've got our glass pane, we've got our two PVC window frame sections, and we've also got an extra body here that is going to represent the air gap between our window frames. The reason I'm using a solid rather than allowing SOLIDWORKS to calculate the radiation between the two uh, parts of the PVC essentially is it just solves a lot quicker. So we're going to start by setting up our simulation. This is a thermal study and you've got an option whether you're going to use a 2D simplification or not. I'm going to show you both and we're going to start with the 2D simplification. When you've chosen 2D simplification you need to use the section plane the 2D cuts or slice is going to be on. I've uh, created one here that goes right through the centre of my model. doesn't really matter whether it goes top or bottom as long as it goes through your model. And we need to put a section depth in. We don't actually use the section depth for a thermal study, but we need to have a value in the box. We're then going to apply some thermal loads, and we're going to apply a convection to the outside of our window and to the inside of our window. So first of all, we'll select the three outside edges. We're then going to apply a convection coefficient to them of 25, the BSI standard says that's about right for an external facing uh, entity and we're going to put a temperature in of 273.15 Kelvin, uh, 0 degrees Celsius. We're then going to repeat that convection current uh, for the inside, so we're going to select our three inside faces. Um, this time we're going to have a coefficient of 7.7, .7. BSI says that's appropriate for an internal, wa internal wall and we're going to make our temperature 293.15 or 20 degrees Celsius. So we've put in all the settings, we have a bonded global contact, all of my items are in contact and heat transfer can happen between them. Uh, you'll notice I've got nothing on this internal edge or on this edge here because those are not to be considered in the study, nothing happens on those edges basically, there's no heat going in or heat going out. Um, you'll also notice I've got no convection on this section here or that section there and that's because my glass pane um, has been trimmed so that I've got a split face between the two sections I want to consider. This section I'm actually going to apply properties to and that section I'm not so pre-trimming it makes my life a little bit easier. We're then going to create a mesh. We're going to use the curvature mesh and we're going to make it pretty fine. Um, with this sort of size of model I can get away with a really nice detailed mesh. If it was a 3D model this mesh density would be much too high but 2D simplification means I can get away with it. Hit run and allow get ourselves some results. Now we're doing a U value or U value is what we're interested in getting out at the end of this. So what we're interested in is the movement of heat power through our object. So what we're going to do is create a results plot which is resultant heat flux. This is measured in watts per meter squared, so heat power across a unit area. Now, because we know that's going to be heat power across a unit area, what we can do is we can probe this edge and see the amount of heat that is leaving our surface. Now, the per unit area is calculated based on the number of nodes, um, but what's quite nice about this is I can probe that edge and I can get a value out for resultant heat flux or average resultant heat flux across those edges. So very quickly I get my watts per meter squared even though I'm still looking at a 2D simplification. What I can do is I can now take that average value, pop it into an Excel sheet, we can then divide it by the temperature difference between 0 and 20 and what we do is we get our U value out, 4.38, which is pretty good for a standard pane window which is what I'm using this example. Now, what I'm going to do now is repeat the process, but this time with a 3D study. So, new study, not ticking the box this time. Again, we apply our convection loads, this time to the faces rather than the edges. So, convection coefficient of 25 again, and an external temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. Repeat that process for the inside of the window. Seven point seven again, and two nine three. I'm using the same values because it allows a little bit of comparison towards the end. Hit the tick for that. So those are both entered. Again, we're going to create a mesh. This time, I'm not going to put it all the way up the top, but about there should be okay. 
Um, if you're doing this study for real, you probably make these mesh densities uh, quite a lot higher. Um, time limits us here. Now you can see we've got a few elements across the thickness. Nowhere near as many as we had with the 2D simplification. And notice it takes a little bit longer. Not significantly so, though. And we get our results out. Again, we're going to create the resultant heat flux plot. And we're going to probe these outside faces. Being careful because this is a glass object, so I can still select through it, just making sure I get the right faces. And you can see here we've got an average on this particular uh, model of 88.109. So I'm going to pop that into my Excel sheet. And we've got 4.4. Now, there is a difference between the 3D and the 2D. There always will be because the 2D is a 2D simplification. Um, the greater the mesh densities that you put into both of them, the closer these two values will get together, although there will always be a bit of a difference. But as you can see, the 2D simplification is faster, but in the end will have a slightly lower accuracy. Now, that was quite a simple model. What we can do is I've actually got a uh, more complex model in the background here. Um, and this is a window extrusion that comes from BSI, and this is one of the units they use to test the accuracy of computational uh, methods for c calculating U-value. Um, we've got an aluminium extrusion, aluminium locking extrusion, our glass pane, two packers, and then a whole load of different solids, all of which are representing air gaps. Now, each of those air gaps have their own um, material, which is based on and the details of which are based on the calculations that the BSI uh, provide. If we jump into the uh, simulation, we, you can see now what happens is I've got three convection currents. I've got my 25 as before for the outside, but on the inside I've got both 7.7, .7, the number I was using previously, and 5. The reason I've got two there is you have, according to BSI, um, a different value for tight internal corners. So my 5 is over these two corner sections, whereas my 7 is sort of over the more open sections. Again, I'm using split faces. You can see the two specifically split faces here um, to allow me to separate those up. If I show the results, very similar layouts before, but you can see there's obviously a lot of heat travel in this small area here. Again, if I probe the, uh, the surface, there's a few more entities to set this time because I had a much more complex model. Again, being careful to make sure I get the right face of the glass. And we get an output of 27.232. So if I pop that into my Excel sheet, you can see there's a considerable difference between these two window sections in terms of the heat flux between them. Some of that will be the properties, some of that will be the shape of the extrusion. Thank you very much for watching.